Learn how to upload your custom imagery or raster data set from ArtMap to ArtGIS Online while keeping your credits low. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another long overdue tutorial. Before you continue to watch, I want to take a moment to thank you for subscribing and if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button below. So today we will learn how to upload your custom imagery raster data set to ArtGIS Online using ArtMap. The next tutorial will show you how to do this in ArtGIS Pro, so stay tuned for that. So in preparing your imagery or raster data set, if they are in pieces or in sections, it's a good idea to copy them to one location. So for example, sometimes your TIFF images has other file extensions associated with them. So you can always copy out the files with the .tiff extension only just to make it more easily accessible, but that's always, but that's just up to you. In my example, I have 20 sheets that I want to upload to ArtGIS online, totaling over 5 gigabytes. I definitely don't have enough credits to post 5 gigabytes worth of imagery, so we will actually need to cache it. In doing so, we first need to create a new mosaic dataset. These are usually stored in a geodatabase. So you can either create a new geodatabase and then create the mosaic, or you can use an existing geodatabase. And be mindful that it has to be a file, at least a file geodatabase. Personal geodatabase cannot be used. After creating your mosaic dataset, you will then add rasters to it. For me, I selected that I wanted to add rasters from an existing file. So I browse to the location where I copied these files. This may take a while to do, especially if you have large files. And after it's completed, you will see the boundary and footprint of each raster in the mosaic dataset. You won't see it here actually because I um, I zoomed out all the way, so you can't really see the, the footprint here, but it's there. And for me, I like to be able to have an overview of my images at every scale because I would want to see what it's going to look like once it's published at each scale that I want it to, pu to, to publish at. So in order to do that, now I'm going to build my overview. Now that I can actually see the images, I want to start building my cache or creating my cache. 
So I search for and find the Manage Tile Cache tool to create the tile cache. I want to use the ArcGIS Online Tiling Scheme since this is where I will actually use it. It, um, it takes a while here, so some patience is definitely required. You could also use your own tiling scheme if you wanted to. But to do that, you would actually first need to generate a tiling scheme. And there's a tool for that that's literally called generate a tiling scheme. So there you would set your own, uh, you would set your own scales. And then in this tool, in the manage tile cache tool, you would actually import a scheme as opposed to using the ArcGIS online tiling scheme. After creating the tile cache, I want to export it to a tile package since this is actually what I am allowed to upload to ArcGIS Online. I search for the export tile cache tool and I'm sure to select that I want to export a tile package or TPK file. I have my tile package and I want to now share this to ArcGIS Online, so I search for and run the share package tool. I accidentally selected enter after my first tag instead of a comma because that's what I'm used to in ArcGIS Online. Um, but it, it still attempted to do the sharing because of that. And I, I, I knew it would have shared, but it would have done so um, privately. It would have just shared to me, but it was fine. Uh, if I wanted to update the sharing, you know, I could always just do that in ArcGIS Online once I get there. So this also takes a while again, depending on the size of the um, tile cache. After sharing is complete, I log into ArcGIS Online and I select my tile package and I publish it as a layer that can be used in web maps and apps.
In the next tutorial, we will go through this process in ArcGIS Pro. There are slight differences that you'll be able to see. As usual, thank you so much for watching and thanks again for subscribing guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this tutorial with a friend or colleague who you believe would benefit from this information. Also leave a comment down below to let me know how you've liked the tutorial so far. I've definitely gotten comments about that and I've gotten emails so thank you so much guys. If you have any other tutorials that you'd like to see, please let me know and thanks again and see you soon.